songs. No mother, no father, to wipe away my tears. That's why I won't cry. I feel scared, but I won't show my fears. I keep my head high. Deep in my heart, I never have any doubt that Palestine tomorrow will be free. And with that, we'll start our presentation today. And of course, certainly, that that would be our opening door. One day, and soon, inshallah, for the freedom of Palestine. I would like to introduce a very special guest with me today. Her name is Sister Ala Abu Shaban, and she is a social worker and activist from Gaza. Having experienced and shared the trauma and the fears and the tears firsthand of the occupation and the relentless bombing of Gaza by the Zionist State of Israel, Sister Ala has decided to do something about it. In that, she has made a trip to South Africa and together with Gift to the Givers, she is raising funds to establish a trauma center for children at the Shifa Hospital in Gaza. I will be talking to her today a little bit more on a personal note, besides just the, the impact of the uh, trauma from the bombings in Gaza, and also, of course, of the emo emotional stress that the children feel, but I think it's important for us to find the personal side of Sister Anna. So with that, I'd like to say Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmah. Excellent. Sister Anna, it is very positive and encouraging to see young people stepping forward to ensure that there is a future for the people in Gaza and for the people in Palestine, of course. And I mean, you yourself are a very lovely young lady. You have traveled a long way in spite of difficult circumstances and you want to do something for the Palestinians. Now, I know that your focus is on supporting programs or aid programs which will then help your people to uplift, uplift themselves. Why is this important to you? Well, actually, before I start my speech, I'd like to pay a DB thanks for ITV and a DB thanks for the South African government and the South African Council for giving me facilities to be here in South Africa with me in my second home. And also for the DB, DB thanks goes for the charitable organization, which is going to pay attention for the support for the poor and needy at Gaza Strip. I think we as South Africans are very fortunate to be amongst uh, people who are generous and caring and of course that we have a government who is responsive to the plight of the Palestinians and that way actually we're not strangled. We have an opportunity also to help you because we have the support from our government and I think you will understand that that's a very big blessing, isn't it? Yes, alhamdulillah. Well, actually, you know, uh, when I decide to come to South Africa, I chose South Africa because I feel that there is common similarities between the South African people and the Palestinian people, where you have a great past of suffering and aggression. So I know it that the South African can feel when the Palestinian feelings and you can plead when the Palestinian pleading. So that's why I'm here. I'm here in order to raise awareness of what's happening in the Palestinian lands for the poor and needy, especially focusing on the Palestinian woman and the Palestinian child. So Alhamdulillah, as you know, and as you told, my mission has achieved uh, because of sponsorship of my project, the Gift of the Givers, and the DB thanks goes for the Gift of the Givers and the Chairman, Father Dr. Mtiaz Solomon. Well, uh, you know, it's very important to be here in South Africa in order to raise the awareness of what's happening uh, inside Gaza, mm -hmm. and in order to, 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 to convey what's happening and the messages from the South African people to my people in Gaza since I came. Inshallah, I think back that to get. Very important. It also gives them a sense of hope and to know that they are the people who care about us. Yes, it? yes. Uh, and, we, and we are making sure that the Palestinian people are not forgetting. Yes. Yes, alhamdulillah. Certainly they must not be forgotten. And inshallah, as my husband said, and I'm sure many other people who sing and Ashif have said, certainly one day Palestine will be free. 
inshallah that is in all of our hearts yes um, sister Ella, i would like to start with a very personal question that is to ask you what defines you as a palestinian woman and you know a palestinian woman always long ages has been different women and when we are when we are talking about a palestinian woman she must be an inspiring woman mm -hmm. because uh, the source of the strength and what's happening in gaza is basically dependent on the palestinian women well she used to stay fasting and to, to be what's happening in gaza to 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 uh, peer the life of war and missiles and rockets also she used to be an inspiring woman teach the other women and Muslim men and the non-Muslims all over the world lots of lessons. So Alhamdulillah, uh, for me personally, I'm proud enough to be a Palestinian woman and to reflect the culture and the thoughts of the Palestinian women here in South Af Africa. And the Palestinian people are a dynamic people, I do believe. I mean, you have a lot to give. You're yes. very courageous. And I think especially in the case of women, because I mean, for them, the challenges are much more yeah. So usually if the men are injured or if the men are killed, it's the woman who have to take over, lift the society up and yes. You know, Alhamdulillah, a long time the Palestinian woman was a symbol for, for, for resistance and, and re rejecting the aggression in the land. She plays an important part for educating her children in that this is the placed land, this is our land, we, we are not the people who are going to lose our rights. Even, you know, uh, uh, they might offer their children in order to defend for Al-Aqsa and to defend for Al the issue of the Palestine. But, you know, before she offer her children, she offer the soul, her soul. Yes, yes. In order, because yeah. I mean, a mother must be able to give them yes. to say yes before you give definitely. up the It's a very big sacrifice. Yes, definitely. And it takes a very strong woman to be able to do that. Yes, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you all and keep you in that way because, I mean, truly it would be an inspiration. And while you were speaking about that, you said that the Palestinian women are a symbol of resistance. In South Africa, you know, the women were also a symbol of resistance. Yes, mashallah. And when they marched to union buildings, it was said that if you strike a woman, you strike her off, you know, because the women are the champions who carry forward and have the ability to carry the burdens of very mm, difficult lives. Yes, so truly there is a strong similarity between the two. Yes, of course. South Africa is free, however, so we can only make dua now that it, it's not very long and it's not a hard process before Palestine gets Yes, you know, that. because why? Because you are still inspiring us to uh, when your great leader Nelson Mandela said that South Africa is not going to be free without the freedom of Palestine. So even we are still having the hope to be free from you as a South Africa because you share a great past and, and you, 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 can, you can feel with our suffering. And so inshallah one day Palestine will be free. Inshallah. Palestine is a land of conflict and contradictions, right? Mm -hmm. But it is also a land of amazing spirit, of resilience and fortitude. Tell me, what makes the Palestinian people so incredibly dynamic in the face of this continued struggle and collective punishment? Because if it was anybody else who was going through what you are going through in Palestine, I think those societies and communities would have surrendered a long time ago. But while I'm saying that, yeah. well, what I want to say is that when you meet any Palestinian, there's always a smile on their face. Yes. They might have nothing, but they'll share that nothing with of you. Course, it's yes. not as if to say, you know, oh, we have nothing. No, they will welcome you. They are warm towards you. Yeah. How? How do you get to that? Point? You know, actually, that might be depend on... Uh, because we believe, we strongly believe that we have the right to stay in our land. We have the right to live uh, our life as a human being. So, so we have the right to, 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 to enjoy our lives and to, to live it. Whatever it was, the, the life of the war, of the life of the joy, we are human beings. And the second thing that's what makes us strong enough, that uh, uh, we strongly believe that this is a blessed land and what we are going to suffering is is uh, just only a prediction of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He told us that you are the people in this place land are going to suffer till the last day. So we know it. And to be honest with you, being a martyr is the highest strength that we are aspiring to have. Yeah, so it's easy for us to see the rockets and to, to handle such a life. Because Alhamdulillah, uh, as I told you, being 
the martyrs and, and staying in the blessed land, we know that we are, inshallah, going to, in the last day, we are going to reward the Lord. Of course, certainly. Yes. I know, when my sister visited Aqsa just last year, she said it was incredible. When she met, you know, the old men in the street and the shopkeepers, there was almost a sense of contentment that many of us don't even have. And, and in speaking with them, like, she would ask them, like, but how do you endure this? How do you manage? And they said, no, it is by the word of Allah, but we know there is something better. There is yeah. always something better for us. Yes. Other people don't have that. They don't have that hope and they don't have that to look forward to. So yes. to see, without a doubt, it's incredible that you are living that understanding that for you is something better. And that means that you're constantly aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're constantly aware of your identity. Yes, definitely. But before we go further, I'm going to take a break now because we have to go okay. to a commercial <laughs> break and come back. But when we, when we come back, yeah. I want to talk to you about another aspect of Palestine which people confuse a lot. And that is mm -hmm. to believe that the identity of Palestine is only a Muslim identity. Yes. But there is a dual or maybe even a triple identity in Palestine. There are mm -hmm. Jewish Palestinians and Christian Palestinians. So, so we need to talk a little bit more about that when we come back from the break. <laughs> surrendering of their soul to the challenges that they face them because it is only when you surrender to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are able to uh, embrace the challenges that you face and without a doubt the Palestinian people are people who have embraced their challenges that's why they never give up but sister Allah in that in that discussion we spoke about this understanding that has often come about where people think that the Palestinian conflict is a Muslim conflict that the fight between Palestine and Israel is a fight between Islam and Judaism. And I think mm -hmm. it's a major misunderstanding because I find myself yeah. in university when initially when I was engaging with the students, they said, but ma'am, we don't want to get involved in this because this is an Islam and Jewish thing, you know? Yeah. And then you have to tell them, no, it's not about Islam and Judaism. It's not about two religions. It's about human rights. It's about justice. It's exactly. about freedom. Yeah. It's about occupation. So what, well, firstly, if you can just inform the views about Palestine, is it only Muslims or are they Christians? There are Jews. Okay, you know, actually, as you as you told, uh, the conflict is not only regarding the being of Muslims and uh, Israeli conflict. You know, because you know the Deen of Islam respects the whole religious, and uh, we Muslims don't hate or hurt the other religious. Actually, uh, you have to know that we are in the blessed land and. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a promise to Sayyidun Ibrahim that this blessed land is going to be for you and for your descent. And for a while, the blessed land is going to be for the Israel. But what's happening is that they are get out of the, this deen, the deen of Sayyidun Ibrahim. So when Sayyidun Muhammad wasalam, came with the deen of Islam, which is not different of the deen of Sayyidun Ibrahim, so now... The issue of Palestine and the the place land is not only for the Palestinians, it's for the whole Muslims. Yeah, so when we are talking about uh, Palestinians, we are talking about a uh, central issue which gathering Muslims together. So, uh, you know, um, being uh, under aggression of an enemy Israeli, it's not, it's not the right, it's not me meaning, doesn't mean that we are fighting uh, be towards our Islam because we Muslims one of the Bawa. No, uh, that's that's me. That's reflect that we are human beings. We want to practice our rights as a humans. We Just only. Dignity, but, but more than that, I mean, inside of Palestine, and it's yeah. important to make this point. There are Jewish Palestinians and there are Christian Palestinians who are facing the same difficulties that you are facing as well. Yes. So, yes. yes. It's so it's a conflict. You know, it's a conflict against the humanity. Because what's happening in inside Gaza, inside Palestine land, uh, it's not acceptable. It's against the humanity. There is no rules. You know, uh, when when an apple has been falling from a tree, you give us 
uh, 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 prediction and uh, a reason for that. Yes. But what's happening inside Gaza, you cannot give a reason for that. Yes, exactly. Why you are killing the children, why you are killing the old women and the old women. Yes. There is no reason for There's that. No reason. And yes. Are you talking about that, I just today read an article by a BBC correspondent, John Donison, mm -hmm. and he wrote about the death of the 11 month old child, Omar, who was the son of the BBC editor in Gaza, Jihad Mashrawi. Yeah. And he says that uh, besides the death of baby Omar, um, he experienced firsthand the death of Abdurrahman Naim, who was a, a six-year-old child, who was also killed by an Israeli mm -hmm. attack just yes. hours before the ceasefire was announced. And mm -hmm. the irony is, and, and this I'm sure will be home to you, because Abdurrahman's father is Dr. Majidi, and he's yeah. one of the leading specialists at Gaza City, uh, Gaza City Shifa Hospital. Dr. Yeah. Majidi didn't even know that his son was dead. Yes. And so they called him to treat a patient, when he went there, he saw that it was his yes. own son. How, how do you deal with that? I mean, like you said, it's, it's not, uh, it's beyond dignity. It's yes. indignity, actually. It's dehumanizing the Palestinians. It's dehumanizing the conflict. I mean, Omar and Abdul Rahman and so and Muhammad, so many like them. Yes. Children are not terrorists. Of These course. are children. They smile, they love, they share. With their parents. Not but you know, I told you, we are Muslims people, and the whole Palestinians who are living inside Gaza are Muslims. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we, we, our Islam told us about it, so we know it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, so we have to be strong enough and to handle this because, you know, our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us that most of those people inside Palestine are the chosen people. And when we are talking about the chosen people, we are talking about the people who are going to enter genital for those without any punishment, without any accounts. So that's what we are aspiring at the last, at the end. This is the main goal of our uh, life here. So, but that doesn't mean you sit back and you accept the occupation. And you we accept. accept. The and you know, yeah. we, we believe that we Palestinians, exactly like you, the South African people, we have to fight yes. in order to reach our freedom. Yes. So, so there is no choice for us. Just we have to resist that, that what's happening in Gaza and our enemy. Now, talking about resistance in Gaza, I want to ask you, there has been a tremendous change in the configuration of the Arab world. Yes. Um, since the uh, Jasmine Revolution mm -hmm. in Tunisia and of course the Arab Spring as it is in Libya or Egypt, etc. What do you think the new leaders in Egypt, Tunisia and Libya will be able to do for the Palestinians, if anything? Because, I mean, in my opinion, yes. the Arab governments have really been very ineffective in supporting the Palestinian cause. And I, let me give you a context as to why I say that. Yeah. Because when I was speaking about the Palestinian issue to my students, one of them came up mm -hmm. to me and said to me, but man, you claim to be an ummah, a brotherhood of Muslims. Yeah. And the most powerful, and in terms of wealth, in terms of money, in terms of oil revenue, all of that belongs to the Arab countries. Yeah. Yet together you mean there's nothing they can do for the Palestinians? So then how do you define yourself as an Omar? It was a very difficult question for me to answer. And yeah. that's why I want to know from you. Do you think the new leaders in Tunisia, yeah. Egypt, and of course Libya will be able to do something for the Palestinian people? You know, it's, the issue is not only regarding the Arabian countries. Uh, there is lots of fine and kind Arabians and so sympathizers of, of what's people, happening. Yes, yes, no, yes. 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 But the things are regarding the government, because you have to know that uh, the issues of Arabian countries is connected to Israel and United States of America. So, so they are looking just only looking for, for what makes them strong and, and what keeps them in power. yes, in the in power exactly. But Alhamdulillah, we are so proud of what's happening regarding the Arab Arabian spring regarding the revolution what's happening in Egypt and Tunisia and uh, what's happening also in Syria inshallah they can also get and their freedom in the Yemen too yeah exactly you know alhamdulillah uh, you know that we Palestinians were experiencing and suffering from the siege of our Gaza and um, you know uh, our economy is was col collapsed Yes, destroyed. There is no any imports, there is no any exports, so, so zero. So, so there is no life at the end. But when Dr. Morsi came and had the power of Egypt, uh, uh, actually things gonna be changed. And Alhamdulillah, it changed for the better. 
Yes. Uh, for example, you know, uh, Palestine have about six borders. Yes. yes. Sorry, seven borders, okay. and six of them are controlled by Israel. So just only we have only one gate, which oh, is Rafah yeah. Gate. Yes. yes. And when we, Dr. Morsi has the power over Egypt, he, he offer us lots of facilities. He he uh, give a permission for the food and the, the products in order to enter Gaza. Also, he facilitate the movements uh, uh, from Egypt to Gaza and from the Gaza to. Egypt. For example, now you can see that there's lots, alhamdulillah, of convoys comes to Gaza. Oh, okay. It's through Rafah Gate. Yeah, through Egypt, there is no any problems. Okay. You know, even alhamdulillah, we have receiving a president and prime ministers. Yes. I yes. Mean, it was amazing to see the yes. Prime you know, to Gaza. of course, yes. yeah, alhamdulillah. Yes. And the other thing, you know, uh, that. Uh, regarding Dr. Morsi has played a good job uh, regarding the last Israeli war in order to make things be quiet and uh, trying to look for a solution for, for the Palestinian people, yes. So Alhamdulillah, um, we believe that inshallah victory is going to be soon because we can see that many good things inshallah are going to be happening. Yes. Yeah. I know for me it was wonderful because for Operation Castle, you know, we yeah. were sitting watching our TV screens screaming where are the egyptians why don't they open rafa the people are dying yes and this time alhamdulillah before anything rafa was open mm -hmm. and then the sick could come out so yeah. we have to go to a break i'm going to stop you there again oh, okay. and then when we come back we will continue with our questions inshallah. so we'll see you inshallah after the break <laughs> Of course, the yeah. tremendous role that was played by Dr. Morsi, but there's something that has always troubled me as an individual. Mm -hmm. And what troubled me was two things. The one is that Israel has often taken advantage mm -hmm. of the lack of unity between the Palestinians. This is a, a problem in my mind. Yeah. That, that you, you have a bigger enemy, but you're divided within yourselves. Oh, unfortunately. Okay. So why this disunity? The, the focus should be on uniting to tackle the occupation and then we can say, yes, we have our differences, but we can work it out. But that we shouldn't be fighting each other, and that we're fighting the Israelis. So in terms of this, how do you as a young woman, as a young individual, mm -hmm. and representing the youth of Palestine, mm -hmm. what do you feel about this failure in order to bring about unity between the two political factions? Because I'm sure the Palestinian people themselves would like to see a united Palestine. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Because for me, as a Palestinian youth, I'd like to see and aspire to see my country is one unit, it's one Muslim Ummah. But also, we have to know in the other side that all the humans have can be differentiated. Yes. So, so it's normally to, to have uh, different parties. Yes. But we are aspiring for, for the uh, unity, inshallah. But you know, what we, I'd like to let you know that we Palestinian people, as a people, as a youth, as individuals, as a women, uh, kids, side Palestine, we just only focus, not focusing about the division of the parties, but we, all of us, are, are gathering under under one thing, which is that we have to defend our land in order to reach our it's freedom. Yes, yes, yes. So in that, we are not differentiated. We cannot be differentiated in that. Yes, so, 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 even as much as we have uh, lots of uh, problems and divisions. I mean, there is, there is problems about political parties in every country. There's no yes, country there is, yes. But my, 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 my deeper question to you is that this division, is this division then between, say for example, Hamas and the Palestinian Authority, is that division then preventing the Palestinians from becoming stronger in order to tackle the occupation? Actually, it, it, it doesn't prevent us 
to be stronger. You know, because I told you, we, 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 are, we are united in our philosophy, in our fighting in order to reach our freedom. But what's happening that, you know, uh, people inside Gaza say that uh, we cannot accept any solution without uh, having the whole of our land. Yes. Yeah. But the other side say that we can give you a part of the land just, as, just to only give us a chance to live as the others. And in the Gazans, for the Gazans, they think that it is not important for us to eat or to drink. So that's why they, they still fasting and, and peer the sage for long years. Yes. Because they have a stronger face that yes. this is our land. Yes. This is our rights. Our right. we, we, we have to, def to defend our rights because um, we are the ones who have the right to live in this land. So that's it. That yes, yes, okay. that's it. So that, that is wonderful. And, and I'm glad to see that the youth feel so strong about it because that means there's a true commitment to of course. what you what you see. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Okay. The other question that bothered me also was mm -hmm. that for many years, always when there was um, conflict, the Intifada, and, and you would find between mm -hmm. these Greens workers and the Palestinians, um, you would hear the Palestinians call out to the USA. Where is the USA? Where is America? We want America. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you doing anything? And, and, and I would straight away say, but why are you calling America when they are instrumental in your destruction? You know, has there been a change now in the attitude of the Palestinians to realize that it's senseless calling on the USA? You know, although they might be the most strongest power in the world, but of course they are an ally of Israel. Israel controls the USA, yes. controls foreign policy. There should be a call now away. Realize it's waste, we're wasting our time talking I about know. the USA. I know we're wasting our time because, but you know, um, when, when conversations and um, negotiation comes, it comes between the, the policies, yeah, it's gonna be political. And you know that uh, the USA has the power uh, over the world and control of the world. The world. For, for, for example, we in Palestine, we don't have our own currency. We have, uh, uh, we are dealing with a new Israel shekel and the other one is United States, US yes, dollar. Yes. So that's a clear sign that our community and economy is controlled by two basic as well. So you're basically yes. under economic occupation in yes. well, yes. economic uh, uh, Exactly. But, but you have to know that yeah. we, we, yes, might our presidents go for say, US, uh, United States of America and ask for the help. But in our sides, we believe that United States of America cannot do anything for us. And they don't want to, and they don't want to do it. Yes. So, so that's why we, we believe that, inshallah, freedom of Palestine will be from our hands. Yes. We are the people who are only going to let us let Palestine free, inshallah. Yes, Palestine. yes, yes and inshallah. Course, and by reaching out to ordinary people, not just the governments, like you reach out to the people, the Arab people, and not the governments, you reach out to European people and South African people, to all the people of the world who yes. stand up and challenge their governments. Yes, it's exactly like, like you. Yes. Yes, when you were suffering from the apartheid. Yes. Yes, so nobody can do anything for you, nobody help you. You, you just get your freedom by your hands yes. from, from the native South African yes. people, yes. And, and the support, of course, but you so that's I, I'm, why I'm telling you, you, you are a source of inspiring for the oh, Palestinian. Alhamdulillah. Yes, alhamdulillah. And, and besides that, but we do need, you do need support, irrespective of whether you did yourself. And there's the new campaign which has started, which is boycott divestments and sanctions, which is now to boycott Israeli products, to yes. divest from... Do you support this campaign? Of course. Because, you know, when you, when you see the pictures of the children who were killed in the Israel, you might... You, you have to think that you might be a reason in killing that child. You have to pay attention to where is your money going to support the poor and needy and the, 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 the children up there in Palestine or, or, or to pay your money for, for the Israeli soldier in order to kill the, the children, the Palestinians. Certainly. So you, very you know, but I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult to, to make it direct, but you have to at least start it gradually. When you take a decision regarding not to drink a coke, so try to uh, drink a coke for twice per a week, so then once per another week. Then you there is no coke at all, well, inshallah. Yes. Yes, and besides that, there are so many boycotts, arrests, and sanctions. 
have given a whole list and they break it down of all the various companies. I yeah. know the other day I walked into Turret Stores, which is a store in South Africa, mm -hmm. and they're selling the Ahava products from the Dead Sea. And I yeah. wrote straight away, I wrote a letter to the company, and, and I told my children now, since there was no response from Truist, we're actually going to boycott Truist. Yes. And we're not going to buy from them anymore until they remove the Ahava products. Yes. So each person, and if you call yourself a mother or a woman, and you understand the pain, or can even imagine to understand the pain of the Palestinian woman, we must be conscious about how we spend our money. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes. You know, I'd like also to pay your attention about the products. There is lots of Palestinian products. You know that Palestine is famous with olive oil and, and lots of other placed products. But because we don't have the chance to make any exports or imports, so the Israeli nowadays is trying to steal our heritage, even our products. They are marketing the Palestinian product under the name of Made in Israel. So it's a kind of a stealing our heritage. There's another phoneme of uh, stealing our heritage also. You know, uh, we Palestinian people are famous and so famous with the Palestinian race. Yes. Yeah. Can you imagine uh, that the, the, the houses in Israeli airlines were with this address as an Israeli, an Israeli heritage? Yes, even the prime minister wife appeared in the media with our. Yeah. They steal everything. My grandmother always said imitation is the best form of flattery, uh, which means that if they're paying you a compliment, they can't do it themselves, uh, so they're stealing it. Yes, from you, even the Palestinian kufiya. Can you imagine? Everyone knows that the Palestinian kufiya is is one of the basic traditions of the Palestinian the people. Place. They imitate it as another one with a blue or stars, exactly like the Palestinian kufiya. Well, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yes, we are. But now we're, we're at the end, so I have to ask you my very last question. Yeah. And, and that is, uh, what is in the heart and the mind of the Palestinians as the Israeli bulldozers demolish your homes and your olive groves? What is in your heart and what is in your mind? You know, just only we say, La ilaha illallah. <laughs> okay, we don't carry that. Uh, bad feelings or no no we are still fasting enough we are patient enough and we we sure that Allah planning the best for us I mean, he I took he took from us uh, our homes or, or our children but he's gonna shall bring us the best just before sundown on the 14th of November Israel broke a ceasefire that had been adhered to by Palestinian resistance groups it launched a premeditated land sea and air assault on the besieged Gaza Strip, named Operation Pillar of Cloud. During the eight-day war, rocket fire from Gazan resistance groups killed one Israeli soldier and five civilians. In all, 1,404 Palestinians were injured, overwhelmingly women and children. 174 Gazans were killed, including three journalists, one medic, one rescue worker, 12 elderly persons, 10 women, 59 children, may they all rest in peace. Islam Mahmoud Abu Meza, 20 years old, Muhammad Hani Ikseh, 18 years old, Rani Mahmoud Hamad, 29 years old, Muhammad Kamal Abu Udwan, 18 years old, Abdurrahman Talat Ahmad Ibrahim Hussain, 18 years old. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تحسبن الذين قتلوا سبيل الله أمواتا بل أحياء عند ربهم يرزقون صدق الله العظيم With its military, the fourth most powerful in the world, Israel used incredible force against one of the most densely populated places on earth. Doctors found toxic shrapnel in the bodies of little children. Israel's use of force constituted a deliberate policy of state terrorism inflicted recklessly on a largely defenseless third world oppressed, historically displaced population. All here suffer from some sort of psychological scarring. To the Western world, these names represent some sort of collateral damage. While they are not war casualties, and these deaths will never be erased from our consciences, 
millions of people will tirelessly seek justice in their names. And I yes. have to stop you there because we are out of okay. time. But Jazakallah Khair, thank you very much for being here with us today. Yeah, for welcome. sharing these thoughts with us. So, fi amalillah, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.